Alright, what's up guys? Back again, been a while, but I just want to run through what I've missed. I think uh, there's been a lot of good setups in Bitcoin the past couple of weeks, um, according to like the ICT school of thought and just basically the school of thought that I project when I'm making my videos. And I just haven't really been able to make a video, but um, I've been trolling a lot in the chat rooms. And uh, I'll just I'll just go back and kind of where we where we were left off. We were in this consolidation. To be honest, uh, we were looking at the 278 level. Um, I I left it at I didn't really know what was going to happen here. We could have gone up to we were looking at 278 to offer some sort of reaction, either up or down, if it broke down or if it could bounce off of it. And the way that it kind of did this candle was very scamish to me and um it's kind of it was just like one one short little pump that, and then it just kept going up without any retracement without any volume and it just looked very scamish especially since i really was leaning towards it going down because what we have here is kind of a culmination of a couple things basically you have the market maker profile so we have a consolidation here, you know, breakout, retest, that consolidation, then another consolidation, then you have the distribution. And so it looked like it wouldn't be surprising if Bitcoin had to come down and retrace more. Um, but also this consolidation at support could, could lend to higher moves. That's what we were talking about last video, a couple weeks ago. Since we did come up and try to test that 300 on just kind of a scamish looking run, um, it really, really set off some alarm bells to me. We ended up, boom, coming down. And at this point, what we have here is a good setup. You see a really nice reaction at an order block here. And so, after price can't hold 300, it's gonna, it came down uh, 25 bucks or so into an order block and then gave you a, a tradable bounce. Well, was that only nine dollars, ten dollars? I mean, I mean, you can you can make some moves in there. It's a pretty high probability uh, trade considering you only have to have a stop of a couple dollars. So we got a reaction there, and it didn't hold, and we broke down, and we went to another key level, this order block, and you can see how the market maker profile is kind of unwinding. Also, so this consolidation here, really it's the wick of this candle, but really all this consolidation here and even back here. And you can see how we got another reaction up here for 260 to 273. I mean, that's not a bad reaction at all, considering you can get your stops pretty tight on these. Uh, because when, when price dips into these consolidations, it's pretty high probability plays. And uh, now we've given all of that back and... A profit target would be reasonably this level here. So it's a weekly bearish order block. And you can kind of see that this is the consolidation where the price kind of started to move away, um, where the reversal took place, where the distribution smart money was selling up here. So if price were to return into this consolidation, then uh, that's definitely where you want to be a seller. And we we reached right up for it. If we move down to the wick of this candle, then it pretty much pretty much the exact same price. And now we are at the present moment. We are trying to react off uh, this, and I think we will. I'm hoping at least because I want to sell higher. But basically, we have a consolidation area. I'd, I'd say this level's good because you got these candles here, and then you can, I mean, it's pretty apparent why I'm choosing this level, I hope. You have these highs, this high, or, yeah, and then you have this high, and then you have this low, all kind of occurring at 266.79. And we have dipped pretty deeply into this consolidation, but I think that we will see a reaction. Uh, how far? 
not exactly sure but we're just looking for basically I just look for a fast move up because uh, a fast move is a weak move it's gonna be very illiquid anytime you see price dart up like this you can almost always expect uh, some sort of form of retracement and um, that's relative to the time scale you're using uh, it works on any time frame but you kinda have to know how to how to work it you see this big uh, fast move up in a couple hours retraced this kind of fast move retraced so we're looking for just any kind of fast move to go up into one of our key levels it might be here it might be here um, right now I'm, I guess I'm favoring 266.7 um, but certainly it could hit 270 uh, maybe not 270 I mean you just, it's just uh, how heavy does it feel really Sometimes you just got to get intuitive with it, and um, I think it's pretty heavy. So let's just say 266.7 is a good looking level to be a seller at. And worst case scenario, you can have uh, 266. So you could have like a seven dollar stop. Worst case scenario, I would if I was selling here, I would have a stop here at like 270. Uh, maybe a bit higher, 271. So, pretty good entry. And uh, we're also looking for, basically, I got to do another one of my video series videos because this is what I've been, I'm, I'm working on it right now. Um, I have some of the slides made up. But basically, we're really looking for ranges to contract because when the ranges contract, then it's less likely to do a stop raid. So basically, when, when the markets are most volatile, that's when you're most likely to see a stop raid. So if you see, ranges are expanding here. So uh, this low is more likely to get taken out uh, when the volatility enters the market. But as, for example, I mean as, let's see what we got. So you see volatility is entering the market here and these these lows are getting taken out and you see highs are getting taken out now. But as we kind of settle down into this consolidation zone, there's really no stop right raids ever. And so if you wait for that range to contract, um, it's very rare that price is going to just go sideways for a long time. Like here's a good example. And this is all relative to the time frame. But I mean, this is got to be at least a couple days. But you can see how there's no stop rating going, going on. If you had a higher time frame uh, bias and you were going to go long, there's no stop rating here. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it's more likely when the volatility volatility enters the market. Slightly afterwards is the most likely time for stop rates. So. You see a stop right here and you see a stop right here. But then we're contracting. So it's very unlikely that as the ranges contract, there's going to be a stop rate. So that's what I'm kind of waiting out here. Because if we go sideways, the longer we go sideways, the less likely that we're going to test these highs, these highs, and these highs. If our high time frame bar uh, bias is down. And... Um, so yeah, so I'm just saying like volatility was injected here and you see a stop rate shortly afterwards. This stop rate is unlikely. It's very less likely to occur further along in the consolidation area because the more you consolidate, the more the ranges are contracting and Bitcoin really just doesn't have that, that capability. Kind of like Forex can kind of just do a random spike out of nowhere. Bitcoin really can't do that as often, so it's just a good rule of thumb that uh, the further along you get into a consolidation, you can really, uh, you can kind of rule out these highs and these highs, and you can rule out stop rates. So we'll see what happens, but 266 looks good, 267. Um, in terms of target... Uh, I think, I mean, well, there's a couple, there's a couple things. Let's see where our optimal trade entry 
gets us from the the major swing high to the latest key swing low. We're going to have 256 to 239. And um, that's certainly plausible considering we have like all this consolidation in here, which is going to offer big support. This is our 245 level, which is a very significant level in the market that I've talked for about like two months about. I was talking about 245 like here. And when we were coming up here, I thought like the 245 was going to break here and we we're going to go up. But, you know, we kind of got screwed there and then it, then it broke up. But 245 is very doable. And if we go... Um, with another concept that I've talked about for a couple, maybe like six months. I think this was like one of the first concepts I, I talked about was this this uh, type of deal here where you get, um, I mean, I, I don't know how I came up with this. I mean, certainly ICT talks about equilibrium and stuff. And equilibrium is a big part of kind of analyzing the markets but I always view when when there's a lot of stickiness at a level I believe that to be equilibrium so and I and I figure out what equilibrium is sometimes you can do you can take a fib from like a key swing low to a key swing high and if this swing low is broken then you have your extensions to the other side and so we talk about the equal and opposite reaction. So if this leg, this is a price swing, if it is completed and we just, we assume that it's completed if this low is broken, then we are, we could suspect to see an equal and opposite reaction in the other side, which is a reach to the 200% extension. If, uh, if that's confusing, basically this is 100% from from uh, the 1 to the 0, that's 100%. That's this, the magnitude of this swing. And we expect to see that exact same thing to the downside. And you'll see that this ray hits the 200% extension. So that's just what the, these fib extensions are denoting. And um, it's, it's right at the consolidation level as well. And it is right in our... OTE box, probably a little bit below the sweet spot, a little bit above the 79% extension. And I think that 250 is definitely a really, really good level to be looking at. I think uh, like 266 to 250 is, is, you know, kind of, that's the bias that I'm going to be looking at using the market, or that's the bias I'm going to be using as I look at the markets in the coming days. Um, but yeah, what I was saying about this equilibrium thing is you can kind of see how there's... Let me pull this up again. So this was the key swing, but we also have confluence. This key swing, we also have a consolidation pretty much right at this level, and then we also have a retest right at this level. We also have this consolidation that kind of bounced off this uh, equilibrium level. So when I see a lot of price action just kind of stacking up at this level and kind of this is where this equilibrium level is where price extensions kind of settle down and it's also the origin of new price extensions. So it's where price is going to find support and it's also where price is going to find um, the necessary buyers or sellers to propel it into an, uh, another extension, if that makes sense. And it looks like uh, like the 270 level is kind of an equilibrium in the market. And the way I explain that is Ra George Soros, he says, um, like the way he approaches the market is that he says markets are rarely in equilibrium. And um, it's just because like people get crazy when price starts to move. So you're rarely in equilibrium. But when you see the, these consolidations, these are accumulation and distributions where uh, the market is, you know, consolidating at fair value, because that's what equilibrium is, it's pretty much fair value. And once you get a breakout here, then this is not equilibrium. This is kind of, 
illogical, unrealistic, um, exuberant buying. Then you get the panic selling back into the equilibrium that's going to kind of calm down and settle while the market uh, redistributes or reaccumulates whatever positions they want. And then you see from this equilibrium, you see another disequilibrium kind of state where people are panic buying, panic selling, finding equilibrium, panic selling, finding equilibrium. And so that's just kind of how I view um, the market sometimes. When I see a key swing like this get broken um, on, a, on a daily chart especially, it really helps me find swings uh, and profit targets to reach for. And it's pretty powerful because if you can project price out 20 30 $40, it's not going to take, it's not going to do that very often in like a day or two. So if you have a reliable method to project price to get to 240, then you basically have a training plan every single day for the next couple weeks, maybe, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. But you can only hunt short setups. And if your method, if you've spent the time in front of the screen and proven your method, uh, if you have confidence and faith in your method just from putting in the hours and the study, then you can have very high odds and just very fun setups to take um, if you're able to project price out uh, further. And um, obviously, that your viewpoint always has to be changing because the further you do project price out, the less likely it is to be true. But you can just... Uh, keep it in mind on a day-to-day -day basis and you can change it if you want but it really looks like we've kind of broken down I bet this is probably I bet this will go right to 240 as well this little ABCD thing but yeah that's basically all I want to talk about okay it goes to 235 so screw that we're not going to use that because it doesn't make me feel good no I'm just kidding but, um, I mean, it could do that, whatever. But I'm going to be looking to take profits at like 250, 245. And then after that, I'm going to be looking for buys because I think Bitcoin could go up. Because, I mean, look at, look at this pattern ever, ever since January. So for the whole year, we've had these pumps and, and these dumps into retracement, into an optimal trade entry, consolidation, pump dump into an optimal trade entry consolidation and hopefully we get another pump and that would be excellent and so basically what I'm going to be doing is looking at that uh, optimal trade entry and I suspect that we'll get a, a, a fast move down and then a consolidation for a couple weeks if, if, we're, if we're looking bullish in that consolidation then probably going to be hunting buys with targets above these highs and that will probably be a very big trade if that unfolds. And if it doesn't, then, you know, fuck it. But that's what I'm looking at now. And um, stay tuned for another another video in the series. I kind of want to roll out like an eight-part series. I'm on two right now. I think I can crank out two real quick. And then... Um, and then have four more. But yeah, I think I got like a good direction. I think it's going to be really good, to be honest. Because it's just been marinating in my mind. I haven't really worked on it in a couple months. But I got some good shit. Uh, it's kind of all fitting in together really nicely. So I look out for that. And that is it. So um, good luck, good trading. I need my own tagline because that's just ICTs. So I'm going to work on a tagline too. And uh, I'll talk to you all later.